Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here, coming at you from the Knife Center, and it's New Knife Wednesday, where I take you through a bunch of the new stuff that's hit our shelves in the last week. Let's check it out. So our lead item this week is a new debut from Maniago Knife Makers. This is the MKM Isanzu, and it's a knife that was designed by Jesper Vaknez and made in Italy, Maniago, as you might have guessed from the MKM name. And it's a really cool little design. There's three different blade shapes. I've got two of them here. There's a hawk bill, a clip point, as well as a small cleaver available. Three different handle colors, and you can get them on all of them, except for the hawk bill. You can't get the blue color, uh, but there is a blue and orange color, a black and blue, and a green on green color. Um, and the black ones come with a black coated blade. Now they call this hydro glider. Um, it's a finish that Fox Knives uses, and that's a that's the, the manufacturer that actually put this together. Uh, Maniago Knife Makers is a consortium. Um, Makita specifically, that's M-I-K-I-T-A, not Makita like the tool brand, is Lion Steel, Mercury, Viper, and Fox. Um, and it's, it's a really cool coating. It's nice and smooth. It's not rough. And it's going to help protect the blade very nicely. Uh, the Hawkbill one comes in a plain edge or the, or the fully serrated here. And the clip point blades and the cleaver blades come in plain edge only. But it's a really cool, as I said, really cool little knife. Nice and compact. Folds up very small in the pocket. And it's got a really wide lanyard hoop here on the back. You could fit that to a carabiner very easily or thread just about anything through there. Um, so we see it not, in, not only just being good for EDC, but this is going to be nice, a nice option for like hikers or climbers that ne don't necessarily want to carry a lot of weight and want to be able to access their stuff quickly, you can clip that onto your, your vest or your pack, get to it pretty quickly. And But if you want to carry it in your pocket like a normal person, that was mean, like, like most people do anyway, uh, wire deep carry pocket clip, reversible for both sides, so it's nice ambidextrous carry. Really cool little knife. Uh, prices on these are just under $85. And as always, the prices I mentioned right now are good right now. In the future, of course, prices can change. So we've been getting a lot of new Kershaw knives in lately, and that has continued here. And this knife is called the Epistle. It's a really cool little gentleman style folder, nice and slim, very narrow blade. And this is a very affordable knife too, less than $30. I think we're at $28.95 right now. And it's a very classy, but still very usable knife. 8CR13 MOV steel, nice narrow drop point profile. Not, you know, it kind of falls into what we like to call an executive knife too. It's got that longer, narrower blade, um, which is basically executive knives we consider just a subset of the gentleman's knife category. Um, but this thing definitely applies in that executive knife segment for less than 30 bucks, um, which is quite nice. The handles are aluminum and they have a clear anodized finish. So it's nice and protected, but you get that nice sheen. It would make a great place for engraving and it just looks really classy. It's going to go with just about anything and it's going to look good even with, you know, fancier clothes as well. If you're dressing up, that sort of thing. In order to break things up a little bit so that it doesn't look too plain, we do have a custom pivot cap here on the front with a contrasting gray color. And on the back, the pivot is still adjustable from that side, so you're not losing any functionality there. Looking back on the handle, we also get a single position pocket clip. This is a right side tip up carry knife uh, with a liner lock. But you see something that they've done with this clip that Kershaw has been doing. They've kind of been riffing on a theme of, of cutouts in the both in handles and blades. And oftentimes you're able to see something through that cutout. And in this case, we'd get a cutout in the pocket clip with the logo underneath, which is pretty cool. Um, some of their other designs like the boiler maker, the new static, uh, the mixtape certainly, um, they're all kind of playing with that kind of cutout motif and kind of staking out some visual identity with that, which is pretty, it's pretty cool to see that carried through on the clip as well, another neat way of doing it. Mostly open back, but we do have a small backspacer here on the end, and it is a flat ground knife with dual thumb studs to open. All in all, pretty cool, very easy for me to recommend this as a classy, affordable gentleman's knife, less than 30 bucks. We've also got the new version of the Kershaw Emerson CQC 6K that is now upgraded with D2 tool steel, which we're seeing them roll through most of the Emerson models right now. And this is probably my favorite 
Emerson Kershaw model out there, the CQ, CQC6. Fantastic design, is going to work great for tactical as well as for EDC. You have a simple straight clip point blade. It's hollow ground and you see we have a stonewashed finish on the actual grind portions and a contrasting satin finish on the flats, which offers a little bit of a uh, little bit of contrast, as I said. Um, looks really cool. It's something that you usually see more that kind of contrasting thing more on uh, higher end knives. So it's cool to see it here because we're less than 50 bucks on this knife, $47.95. Um, but apart from the upgrade in steel, it's the same great model as before. You get a frame lock on the back, G10 on the front with a moderate amount of texture, not too aggressive. And you can open it either with the ambidextrous thumb plate here on the, the spine of the knife, works well with either hand. And of course you have that signature patented Emerson wave opener that as you pull it from the pocket, that little hook there is going to catch on your hem, rotate the blade out really fast to get open. The only thing that's any, really going to be any faster is a fixed blade. Uh, you know, even an automatic or a assisted opening knife, you're going to have to pause and, and actually click a button, but this is ready to rock and it's quite affordable too. So in addition to this Kershaw Emerson, we've also got a handful of new high end Emerson models, non Kershaw, true Emerson's uh, in as well. The first is we have a, some new variants of his Appalachian folder um, and the, the Emerson brand has been putting out some really cool um, outdoor oriented blades recently. You know, they're very well known in the tactical community, of course. That is their bread and butter. That's what they're known for. But Ernie Emerson's always been a camper since he was a little kid. So he thought, you know, it's high time we start putting out some more of these blades. This is one of them. Uh, we also have their Rendezvous Skinner, which is kind of a bullnose uh, shape. I don't have it here in front of me. We've got new variants of that as well. So the Appalachian has a really cool upswept clip point profile to it. It's going to work great, of course, as a skinner. You've got that tip for piercing and plenty of belly. But you think of like classic combat knives like the K-Bar, you know, the Mark II fighting knife has a kind of similar clip point profile. So in addition to handling those outdoor tasks, this is an Emerson that is still a very capable tactical tool. We get 154 CM steel with a black finish, and that's what's new uh, this week. We've also got satin finish available, uh, plain edge or partially serrated. Now it is a double bevel grind, unlike some Emerson's, which are chisel ground, but the secondary bevel is primarily ground in from one side. You only get kind of a micro bevel on the back side, but that's going to make it a little bit easier to sharpen than a true chisel ground knife. This is a liner lock and we've got a aerospace grade titanium liners and G10 scales on both sides with a really aggressive texture to it. You know, that's something they're really known for. Um, that's just going to really lock into your hand. You know, they want to make sure that this isn't going anywhere when the chips are down. Construction is open back, so it's going to be nice and easy to keep clean. And we have a black oxide finished pocket clip, right side tip up only. Uh, price on this model is $234. We've also got some new options for his Renegade fixed blade as well, which is his take on a, a just do it all, all the times on you companion belt knife. Uh, we've got about a 4.3 inch blade, 154 CM steel again. We get a stone washed finish here and similar to uh, the, the Kershaw Emerson, we actually have a two tone finish here as well, although it's reversed. We have uh, stone washed flats and satin finished bevels. Moving back to the handle, we have G10 options, which, which have that kind of traditional Emerson texture to it. But if you want something that's smoother, we also have this model with a rich light handle, which is a recycled paper material. It's very similar actually to paper micarta and it feels really good, nice and smooth. And because it's, it's beveled uh, or it's rounded over a little bit this way, you get some of that topography of the layers showing up really cool look and it, it's, it's modern, but it has kind of a more vintagey vibe, but it's definitely not, you know, you didn't see stuff quite like this on, on the more, you know, real traditional stuff. Um, so it's, it's really cool. It walks a nice line there. Um, feels really good in the hand again, about 4.3 inches, a bit over almost four and a half inches of blade. Um, this is not going to be something that you can strike a fire steel with the edges of the spine have been chamfered ever so slightly makes it more comfortable to, to really bear down on those. So that's the, that's always the trade off 
on whether you're going to get a crisp spine or a, a more comfortable spine. Um, Bolt-on handles, and it comes with a really nice leather sheath. I mean, this is nice and sturdy, holds the knife very well. And then prices on these, the G10 models are a little bit cheaper, and you can get that in plain edge or partially serrated edge. Um, those start at about $230. The Rich Light comes in at a bit under $285. So speaking of brands that are really known for their tactical offerings, next up we've got the Microtech Exoset. Now this is a really cool knife, they've been flying out the door, but we have stock available. And what's cool about this is that two inch blade, it's designed for uh, to be compliant in California. Uh, that length, um, I'm not gonna get into the legal specifics, you can check that out for yourself. I'll just let you know that that is less than a uh, under two inch blade has that really great Microtech action. We've got a side firing switch, double edged dagger style blade. And right now, right now the steel is 204P, um, but of course uh, Microtech sometimes will change out the steel based on availability. And it's an aluminum chassis, as you would expect. We get some really cool texturing, but they bill this knife as doubling as a money clip. That's why it has a really wide pocket clip going on there. Now this pocket clip is reversible. You can go onto either side. You know, you have a two, two point retention there and a lanyard hole going through it as well. And that's great too, especially on an automatic if you're using it for uh, self-defensive purposes and you wanna carry it on your offhand side, it's good to be able to swap that around. So even if you're not right-handed, especially on an auto, that can be an appreciated feature. We also see a little bit of uh, two point retention on the pocket clip as well. It's not quite as, as uh, deep of an extra fold here as you would see on something like a Chris Reeve Sebenza, but you are gonna get a little extra point of retention right there, especially if you're wearing something with a little bit of a thicker uh, hem on your pocket, so it's less likely to slip out, uh, and it's also more likely to hold on to your cash if you are using that as a money clip. But overall, really cool action. Microtech's known as a leader in automatics for a reason. It's a really cool blade. Uh, Stonewashed finish on it, which I love. Really cool knife, check it out, uh, $250 on here. So that Exoset is a really fast knife, this one is the opposite end of the spectrum. This is a, a slower opening knife. This is the Menovade Stuff M2. And this is billed as a friction folder. And as you can see, it folds up super compact too. Even more compact than that Exoset when its blade is retracted. Um, but I think that would make a really cool carry for that uh, fifth pocket in your jeans. You know, we got we talk about that a lot, these smaller items, that's a great place for these to fit. But we have carbon fiber scales, uh, CPM 154 steel with a black DLC coating, and it's hollow ground from one side. In terms of uh, the actual sharpening, it is it does have a secondary bevel on both sides, so it's still gonna be easy to sharpen. Um, but it opens deliberately, and I say this this bills itself as a friction folder. It's, but the retention, uh, the friction is not actually provided by the handle scales itself. I'll get to that in a minute. Um, but we've actually got a small spring-loaded plate essentially in here that's part of the liner. With a, it has a little post on it that actually interfaces with the end of the thumb opening tab here, and it actually clicks into place. It doesn't lock because it's you can still just kind of pop it closed if you want to but I'll show you what I mean. You, know, you rotate it out, and it helps if you turn it then over as if you're about to use it, and you can push down, and it engages with that little piece of metal there inside of the handles. And it provides a, a fair bit of, of retention, too. It's, uh, again, not quite truly a friction folder, I don't think, but you see you have to pop it there. It doesn't just sit on it. It actually kind of interfaces into it. It's pretty cool. Um, and it's definitely still a usable blade once you've got it open. Because of the kind of the thickness of the handle, it holds really nicely. So even though it's only, I mean, technically a two and a half finger uh, grip on that knife, it still feels pretty secure in the hand and like I'm still gonna be able to do some good work with it. Um, and of course you've got great steel to back it up. Uh, chamfered edges on the spine, so you could choke up on it, although you wanna be careful because, you know, you don't want to pop the blade open. But overall, really cool piece, 160 bucks, very high-end, premium materials, and a pretty cool design too.
So all, all the stuff we carry here at the Knife Center, all the knives are definitely accessories, but we've also got some accessories that don't have blades on them. Um, and which is interesting because the next thing I'm gonna show you is from a brand called Knife Guys, but there's no blade on it. These are their kit tools, which are their Knife Guys impact tools. And we've got a new batch of them in. There's, we've got two main sizes. And these are titanium with a tumbled finish, anodized and tumbled. We've got blue and, and a bronze here. This larger one has some hex cutouts in the handle, so you could use it uh, to turn, uh, turn bolts as a kind of impromptu wrench. You've also got a nail puller and a pry bar on the end. And of course, every pocket or every little single piece multi-tool has got to have a bottle opener. They're not going to let you down with this. Uh, so that's the, reg the uh, larger size. Uh, the smaller only has a single driver here, and that can actually run um, like your standard size bit, like your standard size screwdriver bit. Uh, doesn't come with any, but you know you can find them anywhere, hardware store, etc. Larger cutout here in the handle, so you can loop it onto your keychain, and then the head is essentially the same as the top one. You get those same uh, that same functionality, and you can run standard size bits on the the large one too. Um, not up here, but there's a the top cutout there will fit those. Now, in addition to these, oh, let me talk about price, uh, $70 for this, $85 for the, the larger one. And we've also got a few of their Knife Guys Impact Tool pendants, which are itty bitty. <laughs> um, the finish on this one, it's a, um, let me see, what is he calling this again? It's Racing Stripe Timascus. It's a pretty cool look. You still get the, the kind of small nail puller and pry bar on the end and it still maintains that bottle opener tab or little hook here. We've not actually been brave enough to try opening a bottle with one of these, um, so your mileage may vary. Um, if anyone has used one of these, make sure to let us know in the comments. But it really, it's, it's more of a style piece. Uh, 70 bucks for this, it's a pendant, so of course you can put it on your neck, uh, you can use it as a zipper pull, or you can just throw it on your keychain to have something cool to look at and something cool to play around with. Um, while you're supposed to be doing other things. So, pretty cool little item. While we're on the subject of accessories, um, we're gonna talk about a pen, and this is actually gonna be a nice, give me a nice segue into the next knife. Um, this is the Enrique Pena X Series pen. We've got several different finishes, um, and this is, being his X Series, this is a production piece, or mid-tech, however you wanna call it. It's not as uh, full-on custom from him. Um, so the prices are lower than they would be in that case as well. Um, titanium body with a Moku tie clip, which is really cool. Um, really sets this, this pen apart. Um, $145 for this, and we've got uh, bronze, blue, and as well as standard gray titanium. Uh, and it's, I don't know why I tried to screw it open there. It's a uh, bolt action pen, which is very fun to fidget with. You know, easy to, to pop the cartridge out, pop it back. You know, if you think clicky tops are annoying, you could really annoy a spouse with this. Um, I, I think I better not bring one home. I might get in too much trouble. Um, if you don't like the, the titanium or you want to spend a little bit less, we also have um, in this pen in tumbled copper, um, but it does not come with a Moku tie clip, but that one's only $99 instead. Um, so you save a little bit of money, and of course, being copper, it's going to patina and start to take on its own character so that yours is going to be your own. Like, it's not going to look like anyone else's after you've used it a little bit. Um, as far as the writing experience, I haven't actually used it, um, but it uses a Schmidt 9000 Easy Flow cartridge. Uh, so if you're familiar with how those write, that's what you're getting uh, with this pen right here. But for the titanium models, uh, no matter which one you choose, the price is $145 on those. So I said those, that pen was going to give me a nice segue, and it does because we've actually got some new X-Series knives from Pena as well. Um, in addition to the pen, we've got some knives. And this is his Rhino, and we've got several different colors available. You know, blue, bronze, and satin titanium. And it's nice and rounded over, it's a few holes machined out to take a little bit of weight out very comfortable, and you get an M390 blade with thumb studs, and then you can get it with or without a flipper as well. It's, it's kind of interesting, interesting to see this model being put out two different ways like that, two distinct different ways. Um, for those of you that like the flipper, works very well. 
Um, this is the X, one of his X series knives, so it's it is a production piece, and these are made by Riot in China. Um, and don't let the word China scare you away. These are really premium knives. Riot's been doing a fantastic job. Uh, we get that contrasting two-tone finish on the blade, which I don't know if I mentioned was M390. Flat grind, um, yeah, flat grind here. <laughs> I had to feel it for a second. For a second, it almost felt like a, ho a hollow grind. Uh, but flat grind and the swedge along the tip. And you get this kind of nice hump here that gives the blade its characteristic shape. And it also provides a good place to choke up uh, with your thumb. Almost like a, a smaller harpoon point knives can be. Um, but I wouldn't quite call this a harpoon point, although you could probably get away with it. Um, that's one of those things that kind of toes the line between a few different classifications. Um, nothing's ever easy to classify in the knife world, as you guys know. Um, but the price on these is $2.99 with or without the flipper. Um, but it's definitely worth it, I think. Fant fantastically made, just premium all around. Really cool. So next up we've got a couple of, or we've actually got a larger batch in from one of our other favorite designers. Enrique is one of them. Uh, but we've got some new stuff from Andre de Villiers. Some ADV and fixed blades, slip joints, cleavers, you know, all the stuff he's known for. Um, as low as $300 all the way up to about $1,400. So there's a broad range of affordability and a broad range of styles we've got available. I pulled two of them here. Um, the first is one of his battle cleavers. And one of the coolest blades I've seen on one of these in a while. Now it's got a, a wavy pattern here that's not actually laminated steel. This is actually a, a different finish. But we get S35 VN steel, that wicked blade shape. Compound grinds, we have a hollow ground section here with a little bit of a recurve, as well as flat ground here. Of course, you have his signature fuller that extends you know, off the, uh, the tip of the blade. And the really cool, the, the kind of grenade type pattern on the back with a stone washed finish. This knife here is um, about $1,200. But if you're an ADV fanatic, you know why. This is a really cool piece. Uh, of course, it's a frame lock. You can open it two different ways. You've got the flipper, which rockets it out, even though it's a really big blade. But the other thing I like to do because of the way the, the uh, fuller works, you can actually use that for thumb opening as well. Kind of you push, push out with your thumb and then it, your thumb can kind of slide back towards the end and open it. That's something I learned from uh, messing around with Medford knives a little bit, um, but it definitely translates to this knife here. Very cool piece, um, kind of definitely in the style you're used to seeing from from ADV, um, and just one of the one of the many great pieces we've got from him right now. But I think my favorite from the batch is the pocket butcher slip joint that he sent to us. This one's more affordable than that uh, the previous knife. This one's four sixty five, and we get an N six ninety Warncliffe style blade. Um, but the, the slip joint aspect of it is really cool, but it's still instantly recognizable as an ADV. Like if, if I had seen this for the first time, you know, like I said, instantly recognizable. But it's still, it's something a little different than what we're used to seeing from him. The handles are really cool. We've got um, a uh, ebony wood inlay with some copper accents here and some engraving on the bolsters. We've got a compass rose on the front, skull here at the back, as well as an anchor and a ship on the, uh, on the reverse side. And really, it feels like a little pirate pocket knife. Uh, it's really cool. I'm, I'm really quite taken with the whole package. Um, feels good in the hand. Of course, it opens nicely. We've got a nice strong half stop there. And it still carries through that signature fuller uh, design language that he uses on his larger knives. It's a little more crisp. It's not quite as, as rounded over as some of those larger knives, but that uh, fuller works as the long pull that helps you open it very easily. Um, he's even done a little thing right here, um, a little cutout that makes it look like it almost has a flipper tab. And that's more done for aesthetic reasons to kind of keep it uh, consistent with his branding and with the style he's known for. I really, like I said, I just love it. Really cool knife. But again, we've also got fixed blades. We've also got more flippers. Uh, so you can use the link in the description to check those out. Finally, we're gonna end with actually the most expensive piece here today. This is the Benchmade Gold Class Crooked River. 
and a little bit of sticker shock probably it's fifteen hundred dollars but this is they've done a lot more small detail work on this gold class knife than a lot of their other stuff and i'll show you some of that here um, first thing you need to know it's a cpm 20 cv blade with a black dlc coating they are numbered this one i've got right here is 281 but this isn't the only one we've got here um, the handles are where you really where they really kind of pumped it up we've got vinland damasteel bolsters and the the wavy pattern from there kind of it flows into the handle scale itself which is unidirectional carbon fiber looks really neat um, you get a few different layers you get that topography kind of like you did on that emerson but you don't get that cross hatched pattern that you're used to seeing from carbon fiber um, but there's just a lot of cool stuff that people are doing with carbon fiber these days. Of course, you got marbled carbon fiber, shred, lightning strike, and the unidirectional that you see here. Pretty cool. Um, and this is, because of the, the bolsters here, this is a fairly substantial knife still. Um, but to counteract that a little bit, they've drilled out the, the liners. Um, but if you, you can see from this angle that the liners are actually jeweled. Um, they've applied or uh, they've gone in and ground a, a special finish into that. So as you move it around, they just sparkle. And it's not just on the edges either. Like that continues all the way through the inside of the knife. So you get that shimmer, you get that light bouncing off of it. In addition to that, they've done the same thing to the pocket clip as well. And also the backspacer. Back to the pocket clip. This is actually a titanium pocket clip, which is something of a rarity, even among, I think, gold class bench maids. So that's a nice upgrade there. And we get blue sapphire PVD coated pivot rings on both sides of the knife. And of course, you've still got that great axis lock that Benchmade loves. We all love it here too, um, with a black finish on it. Um, what else? Oh, the one light thing I forgot. They've also slightly crowned the spine here on the, uh, the, the top of the knife, which is another nice little detail. So again, Benchmade Gold Class Crooked River. It's a cool knife. Uh, and it's being a gold class, it is a limited edition. There's only going to be 500 of these. So if you want one, you're not going to want to wait because once they're gone, they're only going to go up in the, in the secondary market, I'm sure. So that's just some of the new stuff we got in this week. If you want to see the stuff uh, even sooner than these videos go up, make sure you're subscribed to our newsletters. You'll see cool stuff like we just got new stock in of our Knife Center exclusive Mickel Willemson Mad Dog Flippers. Um, I didn't even get to show you the new DPX Hest with the hammered copper scales. Really fantastic looking knife, uh, but I don't actually have it here in front of me. So again, make sure you're signed up for those newsletters so you get the first notification when these new items are up. And while you're there, I'd always say sign up for the Knife Rewards program as well, because there's nothing better than a new knife than free money to spend on your next one. Meantime, if you want, if you like the stuff here, let us know what you think in the comments. Let us know if you think we left anything out. And if you want to get your hands on any of them, click the links in the description to head over to knifecenter.com. Bring it on. My middle toe on my left foot starts to fall asleep. Okay, I'm in. <laughs> I just figured it out. Yeah, I'm not even gonna pause it that. Ooh, can't use that. <laughs> I barely, <laughs> barely held that together.